Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Janet Gaynor and William Powell in Meyerling. Lux presents Hollywood. Tonight, we're happy to announce that the Lux Radio Theater has just been awarded a radio certificate of merit by the Women's Press Club of Indiana in cooperation with the National Federation of Press Women and the Women's Press Club of New York City. We're proud of this award and are deeply conscious of its significance. Out of real life comes tonight's play, the touching drama of Prince Rudolph of Austria and Marie Vetzera, whose love was mightier than a kingdom and life itself. In Meyerling, you'll hear William Powell and Janet Gaynor with Alma Kruger, Robert Barrett, and Frank Riker, while our special guest is Don Eugene Plummer, Hollywood's oldest citizen. Our music is conducted by Lois Silvers. Before bringing you our producer, Mr. DeMille, I want to remind the ladies in our audience that Hollywood's complexion soap, Lux Toilet Soap, makes a luxurious bath soap, too. This fragrant white soap has a generous, active lather that removes perspiration, every trace of dust and dirt, leaves your skin fresh and sweet with a delicate perfume that clings. Joan Blondell, one of Hollywood's most glamorous stars, tells you... A Lux Toilet Soap Beauty Bath is the best way I know to protect daintiness. You'll love it. Try it. And now, the producer of the Lux Radio Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Out in the Austrian countryside, nestled in a little valley sweet with the air of pine and spruce trees, is an ancient castle with round and pointed towers, a thick forest that was once the joy of royal huntsmen, and stone walls dwarfed by neighboring mountains. There are days when you'd find this an enchanting place. There are other days when a castle would fill you with such melancholy that you'd gladly be on your way eastward to Baden or northward to Vienna. Now it's the home of a sisterhood of Trappist nuns, who every day offer up a prayer because of what took place within those walls. Exactly 50 years ago this month. For this is the castle called Myerling, which gave its name to the great drama of the screen. We are doubly happy to bring Myerling to the air with two such splendid artists as William Powell and Janet Gaynor. Mr. Powell stars soon in the new MGM film, The Return of the Thin Man, a sequel to his celebrated exploits as the screen's most sophisticated detective. Tonight he assumes the manner and dignity of an heir to the Austrian throne, Rudolf of Habsburg. Among our listeners up in San Francisco, there may be those who know two Janet Gaynors. One is the dainty auburn-haired girl who plays so enchantingly in the new Selznick International picture, The Young in Heart. The other Janet Gaynor is the girl who used to work in a shoe store on Geary Street, behind a desk labeled Accommodations and Complaints. When her family moved here, she enrolled in a Hollywood secretarial school. Two years later, she was in seventh heaven and on her way to stardom. Tonight we hear Miss Gaynor as Marie Vetzera. Alma Kruger appears as Countess Vetzera. Robert Barrett is Count Taffer. And Frank Riker plays Emperor Franz Joseph. It's curtain time now, and the Lux Radio Theater presents Myerling, starring Janet Gaynor and William Powell. Austria in 1881. The reign of the Emperor Franz Joseph, an era of social unrest and political upheaval. On the streets of Vienna, there are frequent riots, student demonstrations against the monarchy. Resorting to force, the police have rounded up the leaders of the latest demonstration. In the office of the commissioner, they stand subdued but arrogant, stepping forward quickly as their names are called. Carl Semmering. I'm Carl Semmering. Let me see your papers. Your nationality? I'm a Croat. There are no Croats here. Only faithful subjects of His Majesty. I am a subject, but faithful. That's another thing. Take him away. Next. I believe I'm next, Commissioner. My name is Zeps. Oh, Zeps. Editor of the New Journal of Vienna. And an infamous organ known as the Liberal. How do you come to be in this brawl here, Zeps? I was merely passing... I saw a demonstration, and I stopped to watch. Did you? 
Well, this time, Herr Zepps, your friendship for the Crown Prince will be of no help to you. You'll oblige me by holding yourself at the disposal of the police. Of course. Who's next? You. Let me see your papers. I'm sorry, I have no papers. No papers? Well, that's very interesting. What's your name? Rudolph. This is no time for pleasantries. Rudolph who? Rudolph of Habsburg. Rudolph of... Your Highness, I... Pardon me, please. Salberg. Yes, Commissioner? Notify the Emperor at once. His son has been taken by the police. It's unthinkable. The heir to the throne of Austria. Picked up by the police. Arm in arm with the men like Zepps. In a riot. A demonstration, Father. I say a riot. You mix with the dregs, with the scum of the city. You, the son of the emperor. I'm only proving the moral, Father. A ruler should know his people. I learn as I listen. Let others listen for you. You have secretaries, ministers, police. It's unforgivable, Rudolph. On the night before your wedding, you were with Zepps instead of with your fiancée. Father, don't ask me to play the lover with Stephanie. You wanted this marriage. I wanted it, yes. For the good of the crown and... For your happiness. And you can't reconcile one with the other, can you? Ever since I was a child, I've known that. I've seen it in my mother's eyes. Does she complain? Neither do I. I've accepted, Stephanie. But that's all. Rudolph, is there another woman? One? (laughs) Ten, a hundred. But I'll marry the Princess Stephanie, Father. I'll have an heir. The interest of the state will be protected. My son... No one can escape his destiny. Pray God that time will make you happy. Pray God that I should never find a great love. Marie! 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 Didn't you hear me call? Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. I was reading and... But isn't it time you went to bed, my dear? In a moment. Did you read this, Mother, in the newspaper? It's about the Crown Prince. What about the Crown Prince? Yesterday was the fifth anniversary of his marriage. They had a fine celebration. Yes. I imagine they did. Oh, everyone was there. Why didn't you go, Mother? The Baroness Vetsera should have been invited. I was invited. But I didn't have the heart to go, my child. It's a sad match... That one. Is it really? I've always heard it was. But is it true, Mother, what they say about the Crown Prince? That he hardly ever sees the Princess Stephanie? That he lives his own life in a separate house with only his soldiers, drinking every night? And that girl, the gypsy... Marie! Where did you hear these things? Everyone knows, Mother. Yes, and everyone talks. Now go to bed, my child. Your brother and your cousin are taking us to the fair tomorrow. It'll be a long day. And... Mary. Yes? Don't bother your head about the troubles in the court. They have nothing to do with you. Good night. Good night, Mother. (laughs) It's a very gay crowd, Your Highness. A very magnificent fair. Or don't you think so? No. Oh, yes, yes, very gay. It's remarkable how a few painted baubles can raise their spirits, isn't it? Oh, you're bitter today, Rudolph. <laughs> That's my life, Zepps. Gaiety, song, drinking, and bitterness. I'm quite used to it. Don't speak like that. Shall we sit down here? I'd rather walk. Do you know what my existence is like, Zepps? Oh, I can guess. I'm watched constantly. Watched like a criminal. Reported like a schoolboy. They know who my friends are when they come to me, how late they stay, what I say, what I do. There are two policemen behind us now. Policemen? Oh, don't bother to look. I know they're there. I can feel them. Mm, comfortable sensation. They're sent by Prime Minister Topper. Make sure I keep out of trouble. Sure, I keep out of trouble. Sure, I keep out of trouble. Well, they needn't bother. To lose myself in the crowd is the only distraction left to me. And women? Women, (laughs) the last resort. They bore me. They throw themselves into my arms, vanity and self-interest. It's too easy. Perhaps, but the right one, hmm? 
Perhaps. What about your daughter, Zeps? My daughter? Why not? She's lovely. Young? Too young. Much too young. And besides, she, she, she's not your type. She will... Um... <laughs> oh, don't worry, Zeps. I was only joking. Oh, 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 oh. For a moment, I thought you... Why? What is it, Rudolph? What are you staring at? I say, look at that girl over there, uh, near the puppet show. Now, there's a lovely girl, Rudolph. Yes. Even prettier than your daughter. And prettier than your daughter. I only suggested that one as young as you... Will you you... please let me alone? But I'm only trying to help you. Uh, Just a moment. What do you want here? Oh, I... I'm sorry. I, I thought the young lady was alone. She happens to be with me. Does that satisfy you? I... Yes, of course. Certainly. Are you all right now? I thought a little lie would be better than his instance. Oh, he was horrible. But he was right, too, you know. You're much too young to be alone here. Oh, but I'm not alone, really. I was with my mother and my brother. I lost them in the crowd. Suppose I help you find them. Would you? Of course. Well, what's the matter? It's funny, but I seem to know you. Uh, oh, a great many people seem to know me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we're just about where we started from. Well, I can't imagine what happened to them. They must be here. Shall we let them look for us for a while? <laughs> if you want. I'm enjoying myself. Oh, I love my doll. It's the first thing I ever won. Very pretty. Resembles you, by the way. Mm, I wish that were true. Here. Have another chocolate? Must I? Well, of course. You won them. They're yours. <laughs> Very well. Would you like to hear the puppets? I'd love to. They're over this way. See, the eternal triangle. Oh, the prince, friend. the princess, Against the devil. Shh, listen. Friends of my heart. Oh, my treasure. <laughs> oh, who is this dark man? I am the devil, and I have come to fetch you. Why? To grill you, to roast you, to boil you. Oh, devil, do not take me. I was going to be so happy. All the better. I like to take the happy ones. <laughs> I think it was very sad, don't you? Oh, yes. She was in love. Now she's punished. The devil likes to take the happy ones. No, I don't think that's true. It certainly isn't just. Not very. Oh, there's my mother. She's looking for me. Shall I take you over? Oh, no, please. It's just as well that she doesn't see me with a man she doesn't know. Well, then stay. Just a little while longer. No, I can't, really. Goodbye. And thank you so much. Goodbye. Oh, I know who it is you resemble now. I remembered when you weren't looking at me. It's the Archduke Rudolph. Oh, yes? Is that a... Does it displease you? Oh, not at all. Goodbye. Bye. Are you ready to leave now, Rudolph? Rudolph! Since when have you liked candy? Yeah? Oh, candy? Uh, just tonight, Zeps. Quite sudden. Suppose we come to the point, Count Tata. I want to know. You, as Prime Minister, can tell me. Where is Zeps? Zeps? I believe he has left the country, Your Highness, early this morning. Because of a warrant for his arrest. A warrant that was issued by you. Your Highness is well informed. This time I regret it because I wish to show Your Highness my zeal and my sincerity. Mm. Never use words of which you don't know the meaning. Your Highness is unjust. I came this morning to propose an entente. At heart we pursue the same goal, the interest of the country. I simply want Your Highness to be well protected. Listen to me, Count Zaba. I insist that Zepp's papers be reinstated at once. The warrant for his arrest annulled immediately. I am sorry, Your Highness, but I cannot do that. And I'll see someone who can. Roshik. Yes, Your Highness. My tunic, please, quickly. Yes, Your Highness. I'll go to see my father. It will be no use, Your Highness. The warrant for Zepp's arrest was issued at His Majesty's request. Good day, Your Highness. Your tunic, Your Highness. Oh, never mind. I don't think... 
No shake. I can't go on like this. These people will kill. Your hands. I have one friend. One real friend out of a thousand false ones. Now they've taken him. Where can I turn? Is there one of the others I can trust? Is there one who will forget who I am, accept me for myself? I need that person. I'm a human being. Why have I the right to be happy? My child, you mustn't stare so. Listen to the music. Oh, but it's so exciting, Mother. I think everyone must be here tonight. If, except your brother. I wonder what's happened to him. Look, Mother, isn't that the Princess Stephanie in the Imperial Box? Shh, Daddy, please. Pardon me, Mother. George, where have you been? I'm sorry, Mother. I have business with the Countess Lalish. Daddy? The Archduke's cousin? Very please. She's going to help me, Mother. Yes? She has marvelous influence at court. She's going to speak to the Archduke tonight about my joining his regiment. Oh. There she is now. See her in the imperial box? That's Rudolph, who just came in. That man? The Archduke? Why, oh, yes. What's the matter, Mary? Oh, oh, nothing, Mother. He's very handsome, isn't he? I wish you could have been there, Nunu. Mm -hmm. A governess at the Royal Opera? That would hardly be fitting, my dear. Come now. Let's have the dress. Thank you, Nunu. And then I'll meet a patty sack. Oh, she was so beautiful. But he didn't see her either. He was looking at our box all the time. Hey, who's he? No idea how wonderful it was. The lights, the jewels, the music. And all that for him. For whom, Mary? Nunu. Mm -hmm. Don't you understand? For the prince. The archduke. <gasps> the one I met at the fair. You know, I think he knew me. I think he recognized me. My dear, the opera has sent your mind reading. Now you must sleep. There's early mass in the morning, child. Sleep? I shall never sleep again. He's so handsome, Nunu. He has such sad eyes. I shall never have time enough in which to think of him. Good night, my dear. I'll call you. Listen to me. Don't be frightened. Don't move. Your Highness, the mask starts. It's wrong to speak to me now. I know. But I have no other way. Marie, since I first saw you, I thought of you night and day. Your Highness. I hardly know you. But you don't know what joy it gives me. Even to see you, to speak to you like this. I will see you again. Don't refuse me. Oh, but how can I? I'm never alone. I must see you. It means so much. But why are you hiding? Because, for you at least, I have no title. I'm just myself. Your Highness, oh, here's my governess. You must leave me, please. But not for long, Marie. Remember? Marie! Marie! Marie, where did you go? The mass has started. No, no, tell me. Do you think... That a prince can be unhappy like everyone else, Mary. Like everyone. The curtain falls on Act One of Meyerly, starring William Powell and Janet Gaynor. In our few minutes' intermission before the second act, let's listen in on a Hollywood party. One of the talented guests has been asked to sing. We're just in time to hear the end of his song.
Oh, Sally, doesn't that give you thrill? It does not. Why should I get thrilled? All the time Bill saying is looking straight at you. Oh, Sally, did you notice it? I thought so. I hoped so. A blind man could see it. You're lucky, Alice. You get all the breaks. And then you've got everything. Nice skin. Nice... Why, why, Sally, you shouldn't be like that. Uh, you... Let's hope Alice will be frank with Sally. For Sally's one of those foolish girls who's actually spoiling her own looks. By not removing stale cosmetics, dust, and dirt thoroughly, she's allowing choked pores to cause unattractive cosmetic skin, dullness, tiny blemishes, and large pores. Lovely girls everywhere who know the charm of a beautiful skin use Lux Toilet Soap. This gentle white soap has active lather. Helps keep skin soft and smooth. Nine out of ten screen stars use it. And now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. We continue with Marilyn. Marilyn William Powell and Janet Gaynor. For the week, Mary Vetsera has waited, half in fear, half in anticipation, a word from the Archduke Rudolph. No word has come. But now in the Baroness Vetsera's drawing room, Countess LaRiche, Rudolph's cousin, has made an unexpected appearance. After greeting the Baroness, she moves slowly toward the piano, where Marie sits playing. My dear, you'll never know the sensation your daughter caused last week at the opera. Everyone was looking at her. Well, don't stop playing, my dear. I adore music. Thank you, Carmen. But it was a triumph, a real triumph. Oh, you should tell her that, Carmen. You'll be her pain. Oh, oh. <laughs> Marie isn't vain, are you, child? May I sit here with you, dear? Play now and listen carefully. But the count is not Go on playing. My cousin wants to see you. Archduke, now don't be upset. Control yourself. He talked to me about you for an hour. He wants to see you at the palace today. This evening. But how does I can? I'll manage it. Leave everything to me, my dear. Did you ring, Your Highness? Yes, Roshik. I don't want to be disturbed for the next hour. If anybody calls you, will knock on the door, you understand? Yes, Your Highness, I think so. A new one, Your Highness? Oh, uh, yes, a new one, Roger. An actress or a lady of the court, Your Highness? Neither. A very adorable girl. Really? There she is now. You go up the passage, I'll let her in myself. Come in, my dear. Am I late? I don't think so. It's just that I've been waiting so long. I'd be afraid you wouldn't come. You'd be frightened. Frightened? Of what? I don't know. Perhaps of this cold palace. Perhaps of me. Not of you. I could never be frightened of you. When I'm near you... I couldn't be frightened of anything. Remember? The evening at the fair? I remember. But you were gay and happy then. This room isn't like you. So gloomy. Yes, I... keep this way purposely. But why? Who knows Peter? so dark. <laughs> They're not very gay to most people, I dare say. But they cheer me. This, here on my desk, this cheers me too. Oh, it's horrible. Have you ever seen a human skull before? I use it as a paperweight. Do you look at that all the time? Why? Perhaps to console me for living. Gives me hope that perhaps I too may be useful someday. You shouldn't say those things. Life is beautiful. Of course. I'm talking nonsense. I don't understand you. You look at me so strangely, so sadly. Why did you come here? Because you sent for me. Well, I couldn't believe it at first. But then the Countess said that you would talk to me. So you did. Without a thought, you just came to me. No, I couldn't help myself. That was very strange, wasn't it? Unbelievable. But you shouldn't have come. You hear? You shouldn't have come. You want me to leave? Yes, I, I want you to leave now. But why? You come to see me. You speak to me as no one has ever spoken to me before. 
Haven't you anything to ask of me? What should I ask? Everyone who comes here has something to ask. Advancement, decorations, money. But I have everything I want, Your Highness. Don't call me that. For you, I have no title. Remember that when we meet again. Then we will meet again? Yes. Often, I hope. Have a full report on the Archduke? I have, Count Arthur. Their last appointment was for Friday. Marie Vatsuri came to the palace. Four times during the week. Three times the week before. You see, Commissioner? The girl is from a fine family. This can end in scandal. But it won't. It will end before that, by His Majesty's order. I am having the Archduke watched every moment of the day. They met today in the garden near the Ringstrasse. They were together for an hour and then at the art gallery. I followed them to the plot of the... The Archduke sent a note this morning. Well, Ambassador was seen today on her way... Their next meeting is already arranged, near the lake in the park, at 7 tomorrow. I was afraid you wouldn't come in this rain. Do you think a few drops could keep me away? My dear. I had to invent an excuse for Mother. Imagine, she thinks she's punishing me by not taking me to the theater. How long have we this time, Rudolph? About two hours. Two hours? All to ourselves. We've never been so lucky, have we? Don't speak. What is it? Over there. Just beyond the trees. It's only the branches moving. You see the police everywhere, Rudolph. They've lost you tonight. No. They just hidden themselves better, that's all. Oh, then let them hide. Let them watch. It's they who should be ashamed, not we. Why should we care? As long as they don't stop us from meeting. Two hours. And I want to spend my whole life with you. Perhaps you will. They'll never let us escape. They're working now for separators. I know it. Oh, but how can they? How can they separate us? It's so impossible. They must know that, too. My dear, what face you have. I love you. And we have two hours. Oh, yes, Mother? Come here to me. Oh, my mother, you're home. Didn't you say you were going to the theater? Was the play very bad? It must have been your home so early. Mother. Where have you been? Why, what do you mean? Where have you been? Please. Please don't ask me. Then it's the truth. Oh. And to think it should come to me through an anonymous letter. Who is your lover? Mother, don't. Who is he? Who? Tell me. Oh, Mother, we've done nothing wrong. It's true there is someone, but we've nothing to be ashamed of. I swear it, Mother. He respects me. He loves me. What is his name? I can't tell you that. I demand to know. I can't tell you, Mother. I can't. Very well. Then I must find a way to cure you of this madness. You will leave tomorrow for Trieste. Trieste? You will stay with your aunt until such time... No, don't send me away. Oh, Mother, listen to me. Do what you like. Punish me any way you want. Oh, but don't send me away from Vienna. Please don't let me stay here. I'm sorry, Marie. You will leave in the morning. Mother! Gone? What do you mean, gone? Uh, Speak up, Loshek. Why, uh, she's gone, Your Highness. An anonymous letter to her mother. Tougher again. He's taken her away from me. Why? There was no other course, Your Highness. It was for the good of the state. The state, the state. Does my life mean nothing? Our lives are not important, Rudolph. But our country is. And if you will not think of your country, then think of her. You can only offer her scandal, disgrace. Think of her. Think of her, you can offer her nothing. Rudolph. 
scandal, disgrace. Think of her. Think of her. Rudolph, I've been waiting for you. I've had this letter from Murray. She's in Trieste. She... Rudolph! What are you doing? Aren't you going to read it? No. Have a party. Yeah, there's one, on, one every night since the girl left. Well, it makes our life easier. You know, they say he's trying to forget her. Yeah. I wouldn't write that in your report, though. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> a toast to our old friend, His Highness, the Archduke Rudolph. <laughs> My friends, comrades of the night. I know that I can call you my true friends, every one of you. I know that if I'd been born a coachman's son instead of a king's, I'd still have found you in my lowly hovel, come to cheer me, to praise my humble virtues. Such a mark of true friendship shall not go unrewarded. Aim your wish, my friends, and it's yours. Well, you all want something, don't you? Name it. Rudolph, you are not in a nice mood tonight. Don't you like us tonight? I don't like myself tonight. Play, go on. Play. My friends want to dance. <laughs> One moment, please. Good evening, Loshek. Oh, why, Miss Marie. Oh, I'm so glad to see you again. Is he here, Loshek? Can't you hear them in there? Every night since you've been away, it's, it's been like this. Well, you mustn't worry. He's unhappy, but he won't always be. We'll take care of him, won't we, Loshek? Uh, I'll tell him your share, miss. <laughs> your Highness. Your Highness. There's a young lady. Young lady? Have I made another conquest, Loshek? It's, it's Miss Marie, your Highness. Marie? Did you say I was there? I had to, your Highness. She... Never mind. Keep these people in here. Don't, don't let them come near her. Yes, sir. Sure. Rudolph. Marie. Loshek told me you were here. I didn't believe him. I came as soon as I could. Mother only brought me back this morning. Oh, it's been so long. Yes. You're looking more beautiful than ever. <laughs> Am I? Aren't you going to kiss me? Of course. Rudolph, you have blood in your face. Blood? That? Oh. Miss Rouge. Woman, one of my friends. I'm very gay tonight. Oh, I thought... Sit down, Marie. Or would you rather come inside? Would you like some supper? Something to drink? I only came to see you, Rudolph. <laughs> you didn't pick a very good time. Not quite myself this evening. Darling... What is it? You're so strange. Aren't you glad to see me? Always glad to see you. Always will be. That's what makes it so difficult. I don't understand you. I'll go now. I'll come back tomorrow. Marie, don't make me hurt you. There's nothing wrong with me, nothing that tomorrow will change. I'm a prince, Marie. Archduke Rudolph, crown prince. No personal achievement. I was born to it. But someday I'll be king. Emperor of Austria. <laughs> you see, they've been giving me schooling in empire. Stand by the country. The tragedy is they're not altogether wrong. There's something in this living for millions of people. And... Rudolph, are you telling me that, that you don't want me? You don't need me any longer? A prince needs very little that he can't buy. Oh, I don't believe you. You loved me. What have they said to you? What have they done? They've shown me that a nation is more important than the individual. More important than I or you. Rudolph, if that's true, if you really believe that I stand in the way of your throne, and if that's what you want, then there's nothing I can do except leave you. But if there's some other reason, when I hope there is, if it's something in your mind about me, perhaps, what's good for me or bad for me, I want you to know this. There's no hurt, no suffering, 
no scandal that could ever make up for my losing you. I love you, Rudolph. No matter what you do, you can't change that. Goodbye. Marie. Marie, don't go. Marie. Oh, my darling. My dear. I don't want you to go. But they'll ruin your life. They've shown me what will happen. There's no hope. Nothing. Oh, there is. Just to be near you. That's all I'll ever ask of the future. Oh, my dear. My dear. There must be more than that. More or nothing. I'll go to my father. I'll tell him I want my marriage annulled. He'll do it. He will when he knows what it means to me. I'll tell him that I'm going to marry you. Rudolph. Why not? Why shouldn't I tell him? Very well. Whatever you think is best. Tell the Emperor I'll be there at once. Yes, Your Highness. Marie, wait here. Are you sure this is right? I'm going to tell him. Remember, no matter what happens. Rudolph, kiss me just once. Goodbye, my darling. Sorry. I didn't know anyone would... I'll leave at once. Oh, no, please. Sit down, my child. Who are you? My name is... Mary Vetsera. Mary Vetsera. Yes, I thought you'd look like this. Did... Did Rudolph bring you here? Why, yes. I'm sorry I didn't see him. I see very little of my son these days. Your Majesty. Oh, please, don't leave. How is Rudolph? How does he look? He seems a little tired, Your Majesty. Yes. He's not made for this kind of life. I never met you, my dear. I go out so seldom. But I know, however, that he loves you. And do you love him? I do, Your Majesty. Ah, uh, how young you are. When I was your age, I was already unhappy. But because I was young, I, I didn't suffer too much. We're living in a sad palace, my child. Don't ever come back. I know what you're trying to say, Your Majesty. But I can never leave Rudolph. I'd do whatever I thought best for him. But his life is so unhappy. And he says he needs me. He's gone to see the Emperor. About you? Yes. And what do you expect from that? I expect nothing, Your Majesty. I pray for anything. My child. May I kiss you? You're very near my heart. Mind, Rudolph. You're making a public show of yourself. Putting your name at the mercy of your own officers. And all for a girl who means... A girl who will soon become my wife. If you're suggesting an annulment of your marriage, you can put it out of your mind. What? I forbid it. You can't. I say I forbid it. When you are master here, you can do as you please. But in the meantime, you're going to break off this whole affair. I may never be master here, Father. Not at the price, you ask. I'll abdicate first. Abdicate? I don't care for power. I never cared for it. And I'll not sacrifice Marie for it. 
You've no right to say that. You are not a free man like others. You belong to the people who hope in you. The people of two nations. You belong to... Father, I love her. Very well. You will not sacrifice this girl for power. Perhaps you'd be more willing to sacrifice her freedom for a life in exile. Exile? I'd follow her. If you knew where she was. But you won't, my son. You do this to me. Break up this affair or exile. There's no other way. Well? There's a third way. It will do you no good to abdicate. I've told you that. I wasn't thinking of abdication this time. Will you obey me? I want to see her once more. You'll see her tonight at the ball. I wish to see her alone. Oh, very well. I give you 24 hours. At the end of that time, this affair will be over. 24 hours. Do I have your word? You have my word, Your Majesty. Pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. The curtain falls on the second act of Myerling. In a few moments, Janet Gaynor and William Powell will be heard in Act Three. Before Mr. DeMille introduces our intermission guest of the evening, may I remind you of an important fact, important at least to every woman who values, as she should, the charm of smooth, soft, lovely skin. In Hollywood, Lux Toilet Soap is used by nine out of ten screen stars. They trust their priceless complexions to the care of this gentle white soap because experience has taught them that they can. Have you discovered what Lux Toilet Soap can do? Have you made its active lather your daily beauty care? Here's Mr. DeMille. Frequently, during the intermission time on our programs, we bring you guests with unusual angles from behind the scenes of Hollywood. Tonight, our guest is Hollywood's oldest citizen, Don Eugene Plummer, who yesterday observed his 86th birthday. During those years when Vienna was gay in the sophisticated civilization of an old-world capital. When Rudolf and Marie Wetzera were writing into history one of its most dramatic chapters, our guest was watching the events that were going on in a little valley now known as Hollywood. John Eugene spent his early childhood in Mexico until Rudolf's uncle, the Emperor Maximilian, triumphantly entered that country. Our guest escaped with his mother and brother by stealing a French schooner Shipwrecked, he was captured by Apache Indians and held captive for 18 months. Finally freed, he joined his family in the wilderness called Hollywood and has lived here ever since, 72 consecutive years. But in those days, Mr. DeMille, we called the place Kawanga after a tribe of Indians who were still living here. Why did they drop the name Kawanga in favor of Hollywood? In a way, I was responsible just about the time that Rudolfo was falling in love with Marie, a man named Wilcox bought a lot of land here. I went riding in the hills with him one day, and he noticed a lot of berries near the road. He asked me what they were. Fusikas, I told him. Holly berries. That gave Wilcox an idea. Well, he said, I guess we'll call this place Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And just what was this place called Hollywood. Nothing but a cattle and sheep ranch, almost on the site of this cedar. I once lassoed a wild deer, and up the street near Gromer's Chinese Cedar, I once lassoed a coyote on a bed. <laughs> Since this is the Lux program, Don Eugene, what was the soap situation in Hollywood 50 years ago? It was because of soap that gold was discovered in California. The man who first found gold was Don Francisco Lopez. But he wasn't hunting gold when he found it. He was looking for a molly root. We used to wash clothes by rubbing them with the molly root, which would foam like lather. Later on, 
We learned how to make it into cake soap. But you couldn't interest the Hollywood girls in that kind of soap nowadays. <laughs> Not with your luck soap around. You know, Mr. DeMille, I even use luck soap myself. And here's a funny thing. The girls of my sparkling days used to make their lipstick from cactus. <laughs> to prevent caballeros like you from stealing a kiss, huh? No, what the girls did was to use the juice of the cactus, wild cactus, called Nepal. The juice was red, and it would stay on the girl's lips for weeks. I know. <laughs> do, you, do you like movies, Don Eugene? Oh, sure, I like the good old western, but not the love stories. I think you can make love at home without, without going to a theater. Buenas noches, Senor de Mil. <laughs> Adios. Adios, Don Eugene. <laughs> William Powell and Janet Gaynor in Myling. Twenty-four hours. Twenty-four hours in which to live a lifetime. The minutes fly past, each one faster than the one before. It's evening now. The ball in the palace is about to begin. The great hall is alive with color and whispered gossip. From the doorway comes the Archduke Rudolph, in full military dress. All eyes are on him, as he strides quickly down the center of the room to Marie Vetsera. Would you do me the honor, Miss Vetsera, of opening the ball with me? Thank you, Your Highness. I'm very grateful. Did you see that? Mary, that's absolute impertinence. Unbelievable. His Majesty should hear of this. Why, it's common gossip. Mm. Everyone in Vienna. Good evening, Your Highness. Good evening, my love. Marie, my darling. You're so lovely. Oh, I'm mad with happiness, that's all. How have I ever been able to live without knowing you? I knew nothing before. I didn't exist. And now, oh, Rudolph, I thank you. No, don't say that. What is it? What's wrong? Go on dancing. Marie, what would happen if I had to go away? I would wait for you. No, I mean far away. Very far. To be away a long time. Then I'd follow you. If that were impossible? Impossible? I'd follow you anywhere. Even if there were no returning? A place from which one never returns? With you? Yes. Marie, you know what I mean, don't you? You're sure? I'd rather die with you, Rudolph, than live without you. Oh, my dear. Don't say any more. Not now, darling. There's my father. I'd like him to see you tonight. You mind? No, Rudolph. Come here. Majesty, may I have permission to present to you Miss Mary Betzler, whose destiny you have fixed. I'm charmed to know you, Miss Betzler. Your Majesty overwhelms me. Will you excuse us, please? We haven't much time, Your Majesty. Certainly. Marie, mm -hmm. I'll wait for you after the ball. My coachman will be at the side of the palace. We'll leave immediately. I must go home first, but I won't be late. Goodbye, to then. Goodbye, my sweet. You understand my orders, Lozhek? I'll make a pretext for leaving Vienna for 24 hours. Arrange a hunting party. I want no one but Hoyos and Philip. I understand, Your Majesty. Until tomorrow, then. At my early. At my early. Oh, hurry, Nunu. Do you have my bag? Yes. Yes. Oh, my dear. Oh, there's the coach. He said it would be there. Mary, you'll drive me crazy leaving in the middle of the night. Oh, I should never have helped you. Oh, please don't worry, Nunu. And don't scold me tonight. You don't know, but it's the most... Beautiful, the most wonderful thing in the world. Marie, I don't understand you. Oh, and there's something else. That letter I gave you. 
You'll give it to Mother, but only after tomorrow. Harry, you... You frighten me. Before you go, tell me. Tell me you won't do anything wrong. Wrong? I'll do nothing wrong. Do you swear it? Anything I do will be right and good. I swear it. Goodbye, Nunu. You must do something right away, Count Tarver. My daughter disappeared last night. We've heard nothing from her. I am sorry, Oba- my sorry, Baroness. Perhaps the Archduke could tell us. The Archduke? But unfortunately, we don't know where he is. The prince is so fantastic. I think he is hunting in Luxembourg. Oh, please, then, send someone. I tell you, we haven't a moment to lose. <laughs> you can come out now. I told you I'd find you. Oh, but that's not the game. You were not supposed to watch me hide. You cheated. Instinct of the hunter. Never let the prey get out of sight. <laughs> but I have found you anyway. I know every tree in Myling. 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 It's like a fairy tale. So beautiful. I love it here. You always said that life was beautiful, too. Perhaps you feel it's too beautiful, oh, too. no. It's only beautiful now, the way we've planned it. But, Rudolph, will you do one thing for me? You'll decide yourself the moment when we... when we must go. But I don't want to know. Promise me. You'll know nothing. I promise. I think it's getting cold. Should we go inside now? Quiet, isn't it? Is it always like this here? Always. Oh, I think my eyes are closing. Perhaps you should go to sleep now. No. No, I don't want to sleep yet. Kiss me, Rudolph. Enough for the whole night. Sleep well, my darling. Stay here with me, Rudolph. Just for a little while. I'm afraid sometimes during the night. I like the light so much. I wish I were awake already to see the sunshine. Would you wake me, Rudolph? Yes. I'll come to the door and I'll call you. Softly. You'll smile in your sleep. Then open your eyes and you'll see the sunshine. I'll be waiting for you. Do you remember in the park, at the fair, the first time I saw you? Yes. Do you remember what the devil said at the puppet show? He said, I like to take the happy one. I think I know what that means. Because I'm happy. So very happy. Good night. Good night, my dear. Tomorrow, my love. Tomorrow. What is it? Oh, oh, your highness, excuse me, but I thought I heard a shot. I haven't heard anything, Roshek. Probably in the forest. Uh, what time is it, Roshek? Uh, just 
private programs. Thank you. Come back and call me in half an hour. Very good, Dad. Marie, my darling, you won't have to wait any longer. Torn apart by life, united by death, peace at last came to these lovers. I saw his resting place in Vienna, an ancient crypt in the venerable Capuchin church. There in the hushed company of emperors and queens lies one whose greatest misfortune it was to have been born a prince, Rudolf of Habsburg. A word now from our two stars, William Powell and Janet Gaynor. In a year and a half, Miss Gaynor has come to the air only twice. But we are happy and grateful that on both occasions, the scene of her performance has been the Lux Radio Theater. Well, Mr. DeMille, I've always had a warm spot in my heart for this program. I have two reasons for saying that. First, you bring to the air a dignity in keeping with the best traditions of the stage and screen. And secondly, you represent a beauty aid that I've always liked and used. Lux Soap. It's a pleasure to use it when I'm working in pictures and at home, too. Incidentally, it was also a great pleasure to be here tonight with my old friend, Bill Powell. Thank you, Janet. Bill, what are your reactions to playing tragedy? Well, Cecil, after what happened to that royal pair, I think I feel like sitting down and having a good cry. But you know, uh, even though our sympathies are centered upon Marie and Rudolph, I can't help but spare a thought for Rudolph's father. The old emperor, Franz Joseph. You remember, he lost his wife, the empress, through assassination. His brother, Maximilian, met death in Mexico before a firing squad. And in 1914, another son, who became heir to the throne following Rudolf's death, was killed at Sarajevo in a prelude to the World War. All of which leaves me with a decided preference to play rather than aspire to royalty. Thank you, Cecil, and good night. Good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night, Mr. Jonah, Mr. Powell. I hope for a speedy recovery. Good night. Speedy return to him. <laughs> Our play next Monday night unfolds to the rhythm of roaring presses, the clatter of the linotype, and the chorus of editors barking copy. It's the drama behind the drama of your daily newspaper, the brisk romance of rival reporters, one of them a girl, who refuses to lend an ear to wedding bells until she proves that all good reporters aren't men. It's the loudly applauded screen hit Front Page Woman. I'm happy to say that our leading man will be one whose return here you've requested so many times, Fred McMurray. And opposite Fred, a soaring star who's attracting great attention in Hollywood today, Paulette Goddard. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Fred McMurray and Paulette Goddard in Front Page Woman with Roscoe Kahn. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Louis Silvers appeared through courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio where he directed music for the new film, Kentucky. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>